I'm curator for Oceania here at the National Museum of World Cultures, and I'm going to try and give a very short presentation uh, on a project that um, we conducted together with uh, lots of other people, actually, but it's just a small part of a larger project. So the uh, larger project is a part of, the, of an Australian research, funded, uh, research council funded discovery project, which is entitled uh, Globalization, Photography and Race, uh, the Circulation and Return of Aboriginal Photos in Europe. Uh, so it explores historical collections, and there's two par main parts actually to the project. One part is documenting the historical collections that are at the museum, the different museums. And um, the other part is returning particular parts or sharing particular parts of the collections with uh, the relevant uh, communities. So those are the partners. So the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford, Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology in Cambridge, uh, Musée du Quai in Paris, and uh, Museum Volkenkunde in Leiden, because it was started up before the, the merger. Um, so the photographs that uh, I worked with are a small, well, quite a large set actually of photographs, for, uh, 470 images that were made by an anthropologist, a Dutch anthropologist named Alexander Cornelis van der Leden. And he um, spent a, exactly a year in an Aboriginal community in Australia. So he, um, he spent one year in this Aboriginal community and made photographs, he made, um, he collected uh, objects as well, yeah. uh, which are now in three museums, the Australian Museum in Sydney, the National Museum of Australia in Canberra, and the uh, Museum Volkenkunde in Leiden. He made uh, photographs, uh, which are also here, and part of them are at uh, Ayatsis in Canberra. And then he also made sound recordings, where, which are also spread, well, uh, in, two, uh, in two places. So but I'm going to focus here on the pho photographs. Oh, it's still bad. <laughs> I'm going to focus on the photographs. Um, so um, the photographs were made in this small uh, community, Numbulwai, which is marked in orange there, um, which is in, uh, situated in Arnhem Land, which is in the northern part uh, of the Northern Territory of uh, Australia. And uh, today, Numbulwar is still a remote community. There's about 400 people living there. And during the uh, wet season, you can actually only reach it by uh, airplane. So when I arrived there, uh, there were, um, well, actually people were waiting for me and I was uh, met by Ella Gea, who's a community, um, um, well, uh, working at the community center, uh, let's say. And she had uh, appointed three women who were going to work with me. Actually, it turned out that one of the women, we quickly developed a really close relationship, and one of the women I worked with most was uh, Jangu Nundribala, who you can see there in the photo, uh, photograph to the uh, right. And the other two women I worked with, can, you can see them on, on, in the photograph on the left, so that was uh, Fame Mangura and uh, Leonie Muramun. So together we decided to uh, set up an exhibition. So it was called the Van der Leden exhibition, which you, they had printed a, a kind of a, a paper just to put on the um, a school uh, door of the um, language uh, lab. And so the ex exhibition, in, in that exhibition, we showed uh, the images in three formats. So there was a, a slideshow showing in the language lab. There were, were also, oh, sorry. Uh, there were also just uh, images that I had printed out here and that we put up on a wall. Um, and then there were also albums that people could just go through. So um, immediately, for, before setting up this exhibition actually, we were confronted with the issue of who can actually access these images. Um, and uh, in Australia, there are quite a few projects that have been uh, dealing with, them, with this, but this is one of the most uh, famous one or the most uh, well-known ones, and that's the Ara Iriticha uh, project, where they have a whole digital database where people can access, depending, um, well, on, in different uh, ways, can access digital material, so audio material, uh, photographic material, um, and uh, also just written uh, material. 
So um, uh, it was um, actually something I, I didn't know before going was that there was a whole set of images that had restricted access. I discovered uh, part of the restricted access at uh, IATSIS uh, um, library and archive where the images that were restricted were marked with this, these red you know, um, labels and so I couldn't actually see the images. And then in the community, uh, it was also decided that I had to, uh, that uh, men were going to decide which images were restricted. And those images are um, images of ceremonies, uh, of uh, initiation, male initiation ceremonies. So those two men helped me uh, decide which images should, be, uh, should not be seen by the whole community. And so uh, we kind of made up a system of covering up um, particular sheets in the albums, and also in the slideshow we took those images out. So here you can see an image of a man who's actually lifting up one of the papers that is covering up the, the, well, the images that are restricted for access. So um, it was clearly marked that this was an album where you had restrict, restricted images, and that, um, uh, and so but when, uh, men actually used the, these albums and really looked at them. And women really um, were made sure that they stay, stayed clear from those uh, images. Uh, another issue um, that came up is the issue of um, showing images of people who have um, passed away. Um, and um, it's, it's kind of a, a common, um, well, something that you hear that, that occurs very regularly in, in Australia is, is this kind of blanket statement saying that uh, these um, that images of people who have have died shouldn't be shown and um, I saw that this was probably the case in in the past in the 80s where for example uh, Victoria Burbank even when she was writing about people who had passed away um, didn't mention the names just because the because they had passed away, but here in this uh, project, I found that this wasn't really a, a current, an actual problem today, uh, because people talked very freely about, for example, this um, this boy who was now a man and who had um, just uh, passed away very recently. Also, uh, the issue of the relevancy of these images today. Uh, for a lot of the people in the community, it was a way of reconnecting. Uh, the, um, the past to the present. And every time you saw images of, for example, this man, Madi Murungun, uh, it was stressed by everyone that this man was a really important man because he chose where to um, establish the community. Because in uh, 1952, the community became a sedentary community and they were before kind of living in a semi-sedentary way, but together with another community, and they didn't really get along, so they decided to establish their own community. And he was a community, a tribal, uh, well, a community leader, and he was a, um, so he was very important, and that was stressed time on, on, uh, on time again. But we also had very kind of uh, personal uh, stories coming up. Uh, so also about the past, but also really um, connecting the, the, the past to the present. So this uh, woman, for example, she was a nurse. And um, um, Jiang Wu, the woman I, I, I worked with the most, uh, stressed every time again that this woman had taught her how to, um, how to well, do basic nursing. And, uh, and she, she was really happy to see also this little um, what she called a hut, which was set up next to the airstrip, where people, if they needed some care and the doctor came in, they could have some private space to uh, be looked at by a doctor. Uh, this was an image which really talked to uh, the children, because they immediately recognized their school building in there. And uh, they, that was also a way for them to make these images relevant actually to them today because they saw something that they really recognized and that meant a lot to them today still. So. Um, and this kind of uh, characterizes the whole atmosphere of, 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 the, of the exhibition that was uh, set up. Um, so uh, Leonie Murungun, she called out, I can't stop looking at this picture. And people came two times, three times, four times. Uh, there were people who actually um, stopped me at eight o'clock in the morning asking when the exhibition was going to open so they could come. 
um, and it was really a way of kind of reconnecting to um, to their family, and also uh, reconnect understanding the family links, family uh, the kinship uh, links. So here are just a few images showing how people kind of relate to these uh, images. Here as well, she uh, came back three times uh, with uh, the first time she came by herself, the second time she came with her son, and then she came a third time telling me that her father unfortunately couldn't come because he was still alive, but he was not feeling well enough to actually come. And so the, 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 the older women really stressed again that the importance of these images and also all the children came, all the children of the community came to see the exhibition and they were uh, being um, told about the images by, by the um, older women. Um, these images were also a way um, for, for people to kind of what I call here dusting off knowledge. So old knowledge, things of how to do particular things. And so because the, the, uh, the images also included just um, aspects of daily life. And this is uh, quite a nice example of this uh, boy who, um, who was really kind of fascinated by the, by the canoes he saw. And he was a keen fisherman. So, and he, he told me the story that one day he, uh, he got stuck with his father on a boat because the motor uh, broke down. And so they had to paddle like for two hours back to, shore, back to the shore. Uh, and so he said like, if I could make a boat like this, uh, I could just sail back and then wouldn't need all the, all the petrol and, the, and, um, uh, and I wouldn't need to pay for, for it. So immediately the, the, the older women also um, gave him advice on how to uh, connect with older men who still knew how to make these uh, canoes. And this is just an example to show what we managed to do. So this was one of the images of, the, uh, of young men who were living in one house all together. And so we uh, managed to identify everyone. And also with the identification came a lot of the stories, of course. Uh, so, but here is, well, it's the, the end of my, my talk, but I just wanted to also ask a few kind of uh, questions, actually, which come up with this kind of uh, project. Because now we have these images where, which were made 50 years ago in Numbulwar. Then they were kind of dispersed across different uh, museums. The images go back to Numbulwar. And so what we have now is kind of a very kind of scattered archive where the information co uh, connected to the uh, images is, is really uh, scattered. So some of the question, questions that, that came up uh, during this project is who should be allowed to access the images? Um, how can the images be made relevant today? Uh, what can the images teach us? And with us, I mean everyone, not just the museum people, but also the people in, uh, in uh, Numbuwa. Um, how do we archive the knowledge created by sharing these images? And uh, where do we archive this created knowledge? And I think the first point of the, the point of access is really, is really important because even though these images are now in Numbulwa, I know they, they still have very limited access because they are in the albums which are kept in the, in the kind of the head office of the community. And uh, I know that most, um, most people do, do, will not uh, access the, the, the computer, for example, which is in the school because still that is quite a big barrier. If you don't get people to look at the images, which they find really important and are really enthusiastic about, this, is, this still constitutes a very big barrier to go through those um, official uh, steps. So 